Now it's been about three years since my last photo studio tour of Photo Tripper headquarters and a lot has changed since then. So let me give you a little tour and I'll show you what's different. So first thing you might notice is it's a lot bigger. It's much bigger than my last studio. And th there is a bit of empty space right now, but as you can see, I've still got things in tote boxes. It's, it's, it's not too much of a mess. It's kind of bare, but it's a work in progress. And at the moment, the whole office centers around this gadget here. This is a Comha Pro standing desk with drawer by FlexiSpot. And if you remember the previous uh, office tour that I did, I just had a standard desk with a desk riser on the top of it. It didn't move, it was static, and it was kind of a bit janky. It was better than nothing. I could work standing up with my treadmill, but I've always wanted one of these because this goes up and down. I'll show you how it works. So if I'm, if I'm working away and I decide, oh, I need to write an email, I've got to do some typing, or perhaps I'm doing some intricate brushwork in Photoshop, editing one of my images, then what I want to do is hit this number one button here and the whole thing moves. And I'm not really, oh, this squat is quite painful. Oh, that's why I've got my ball ready to catch me. Oh, so nice. And, and obviously the reason why I use a ball is because I don't want to be picking up a chair and putting it on my treadmill. So the ball is, is the best thing for it. And this is a lot like a car seat where you can program in your settings and then assign it to a button. So I've assigned my sitting position to number one. And then when I'm ready to put some more miles on and go back to standing, I'll hit number two and up it goes. And I'll, I'll have to do my squat in reverse now. Oh God. Another thing that I love about this desk is it has this little drawer for life's essentials. Oh yes, <laughs> my precious chocolates, not to be shared. What's that? Uh, documents, taxes and that. I also love the wireless charging for my phone, I just put that there and it starts to charge. And I really like these two USB slots for charging other devices like, like this microphone here. So that's quite convenient too. Now, if you're wondering, Gavin, have you been sponsored by FlexiSpot? Yes, I absolutely have. And thank you very much, FlexiSpot, because I have wanted a desk like this for years. The thing that you guys don't realize is that I, I actually do get approached from brands all the time to promote their gear. And I have to turn away about 90% of them because most of the time it's, it's just not very good stuff. But I was really impressed with the quality of this. It's super sturdy. You can see it lifts all my gear up and down. And I think we put this together in about half an hour, love. Something like that. Yeah, about half an hour. So I expect to have many years of usage out of this super sturdy standing desk. And if you're interested in getting your own, there's a link in the description. Tell them I sent you. Right, so what else? Uh, oh, right, the treadmill. So this is, this is what's called a, a walking pad. I'll switch it on. Off we go. Right, walking backwards here. Not, not recommended. Uh, oh God, uh, come round here love, I'm gonna fall over. So the reason why I've got one of these uh, walking pads is for health reasons, because if you're a photographer, video editor, sound designer, wh whatever, accountant even, if you're sat in front of a computer all day, every day, which I have been for many, many years, probably most of my adult life, it's not good for you, that sedentary lifestyle. So they say anyway. And uh, this, if I, if I do a 10 hour day, I've probably done on average between eight and 14 kilometers per day if I do a full day and I don't spend too much time sitting. So that's, that's significant. So that's major health benefits. The only thing I don't like sometimes is you get a static electricity buildup, which kind of discharges on your equipment and you get a bit hot and sweaty. So I have to have the coldest room in the house with the window open because I just tend to get a bit hot. And then, like I said, sometimes if you're doing something really intricate on your computer, you can't be having your head bobbing up and down. So that's when I'll switch it off 
and I'll, I'll lower the desk and I'll sit on the ball. Oh, let me show you the ball. So this was a, a cheap Amazon purchase. By the way, I'll put affiliate links in the description below if you're interested in getting any of this stuff. Uh, so it wouldn't cost you anything more to buy, but I might get a, a few dollars if you bought something like this. So I used to have one of those, uh, just, just a perfectly round ball without this in it. But what you'll find when you use those is they roll away. So this one comes in this little jacket with a handle on it. So it, it doesn't roll away. And if you want to pick it up and move it, the handle makes that really easy to do. I don't know why they didn't have these years ago. Brilliant little idea. While we're on the subject of health and fitness, look at my fantastic multi gym that I definitely use every four months. No one's gonna take fitness and health advice from me. Look at the state of me, but I am trying. Oh, I should show them where I fell. So I don't know if you can point it up, love, but if you see that hatch up there, it's 12 feet up, I fell out of that hatch down on this rock hard floor in May and I smashed up my knees and I sprained my ankle really bad. Lucky to be alive really, but it, that's kind of slowed me down, so I, I can't run, I can't do much of much of anything really. But this thing is is my favourite little gadget. I, my favourite thing to do is the dips. Come and have a look at these dips. So I get on here like this, and I, I get my knees up, and I dip. Three, four, two hundred. There you go. Oh God, massive, massive triceps now. And also the pull-up bar, pull-ups, dead easy. Watch how many of these I can do. Right, let me show you some of the artwork on the walls over here. That's a lovely painting by my mother. She, she did that for me, so that's where I can always see it in my office. Oh, one of my prized, prized possessions, my laminated map of Vancouver Island. I have been to so many of these places, it's unbelievable. And then I, I, I just love maps. So I've got my world map. I guess one day I might do that cliche thing where you put little pegs on all the countries you've been to. This is my only, uh, print of my own that I've put in this space so far. But I don't know what, maybe I'll put Mon Massive print or maybe I'll put like a triptych. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this wall. Time will tell. And then here's a painting by Roy over here. That's Castle Stalker that you might recognize from the last video. Oh, and this is my uh, guitar collection. I'll show you my guitars here. So most of my guitars are not really worth much. Some of them are worthless. In fact, this one, this is my Squire Stratocaster. Uh, I tried to sell this before we moved because I just didn't want to move a bunch of stuff and uh, they offered me $80 for it. $80. It sounds brilliant, looks nice, plays nice. In fact, this is the one I used on that piece of music that everybody loves that I, that I put on my videos. I'll, I'll, I'll play it, you know. So this is the very guitar that I used uh, for the recording of this piece of music. Hey, Leo. <laughs> so that's the Squire Strat, and then I just got this new guitar stand, which I absolutely love. Uh, and as I said, none of these are really worth anything because uh, some of them are handmade specifically for me, which nobody else wants. They have no monetary value. And one of them I actually made myself. So you might not know this, but I'm a, I'm a qualified luthier. I actually went to college to learn how to make guitars. This is the first one I made. This is a bass. It's a, a copy of a Music Man Stingray. And uh, try not to look too closely at the paint job or the truss rod sticking out the back of the, of the neck. It shouldn't be functional with a disgraceful job like that, but it actually plays brilliantly. And it's just because I wanted a really thin neck and I just went a little bit too far with the file and just got right down to the truss rod. But yet to this day, it sounds great, plays great. 
and it stays in tune somehow. Uh, I did make two guitars which were exquisite and I got robbed. I got burglarized in England and they're gone. I don't even have pictures of them. So distant memory, quite heartbreaking that. Uh, a couple more guitars and another Hamer bass. Again, brilliant bass with a Babinga body. Worthless. No, no one would give me any money for this. Sounds great, plays great, looks great. It's just one of those things, you know. I like to make good things out of cheap, worthless gear. Oh, look at this. So these are the headphones that I use and looking at them, you would think that they're wireless. No, they're not wireless. Leo just chewed through the cable. Didn't you, Leo? Yeah, chew through these now, hey? I'm gonna get some wireless, then you can't chew them. He's got, a, he's got a weird chewing fetish. Cables and sellotape. He can't get enough. Won't eat his cat food, but he'll eat all the sellotape you can feed him. Like I said, I like to do good things, create beautiful things out of cheap, cheap gear. So this is my audio interface. It's a PreSonus audio box i1. It's probably seven years obsolete at this stage. Probably couldn't get $20 for that. Sounds great, works great. And then this microphone, this is the microphone that I do all my lovely voiceovers with. And uh, again, obsolete, you can't buy these anymore. This is an uh, SE Electronics Z3300A. This is what I use for all of those voiceovers in my videos. Here's a top tip for you. If you're looking for a really good vocal mic, either for singing or for voiceovers, what I would recommend you do is spend a little bit of money and rent about eight top-end microphones. This one was one of the cheaper ones. So I rented all the best microphones I could get, plus two or three cheaper ones, and just did a comparison, recording my own voice and see which microphone worked better for my voice. And this was, it just blew away. This was about, I don't know, seven or eight hundred dollars 15 years ago. and. It was better than some of the $5,000 microphones. So if, you, if you're in the market for a mic, rent and then pick the best for your voice. Oh, let's talk about my, my editing suite, what I actually use to do my work. When it comes to video, I use DaVinci Resolve. I find it's absolutely brilliant. You can actually get a free version of DaVinci Resolve and they're not gonna like me saying this, uh, but it's the truth. Uh, is that you really only need the free version. I, I paid the $500 years ago for the DaVinci Resolve Studio. It's like the pro version. And the reason why I wanted to pay for it is because I just didn't want them to go out of business, right? Because I loved the software. So I bought it. And since then I've got, I've got free updates every few months as they roll out new features. No subscription model, doesn't cost me anything more. I, I don't know how they're gonna stay in business to be quite honest with you but there is the free version. There's a few less features with it, but if you're just starting out, that's really all you need. But anyway, I paid for the full version. And what I love about it is the audio capability. It has this Fairlight module. You can have EQ and compression, all kinds of stuff on your tracks individually or on just individual clips. It's brilliant. And then also I really love the color grading. There's just so much you can do with the color grading in this compared to Adobe Premiere. I switched from Adobe Premiere a few years ago and I am never going back. All right, my speakers. So these are my uh, studio monitors. These are the Alesis Monitor One Mark II. I absolutely love these speakers. They sound great, they're extremely clear, but most importantly, they're quite transparent. These days, most people have powered speakers. I'm still old school, I've still got an amplifier that powers these two passive speakers. Plus I've got a subwoofer as well. Now anyone who knows anything about audio and mixing knows that this arrangement, where I've got these on my desk, is not ideal. That's just temporary. Eventually I'll probably get some really high quality speaker stands here and just here, which will give me a wider stereo field and it'll make it not resonate in this lovely desk, which I'm sure it's doing at the moment. So just a temporary setup, but I love these speakers. And again, I think these are probably obsolete. All of my gear is it's really old. 
but I look after it and I just keep it going. And as long as it works for me, I, I don't see any reason to upgrade. Yeah, and I don't see any reason why you're not giving me snacks right now. So let me show you a little bit of my, my editing suite for photography. So two of the tools that I use the most are Photoshop and Luminar. This is Luminar and this is what I use now pretty much exclusively for my panorama stitching. I've found it gives me far better results than Photoshop. But Photoshop's what I use for my, my standard editing. It's going to Photoshop. Oh, what's this? Oh, right, yeah. So I'm doing a workshop in Newfoundland in May with a brilliant Newfoundland photographer called God Follett. There's a link in the description. If you're interested in joining us in May, go and have a look at that. Hope to see you there. Another thing that I, I need to have as a photographer, especially as a landscape photographer, is I basically, this is what I do, is I, I walk in from a trip and the first thing, I, first thing I need to do is I need to be able to dump my camera bag and then switch all the stuff out and charge my batteries. So this is kind of like a dump station for the camera bag and I've got all my camera chargers, the drone battery chargers, basically everything gets charged here on this dump station and also it's a good spot for like switching out lenses cleaning your your camera gear your sensors all that kind of stuff what i think i want you know you've seen all those posh youtuber videos where they've got all those really expensive home depot uh tool racks and drawers i want some of that eventually but that's thousands of dollars that that's years down the line for now it's a cheap walmart table with a cover on it and that'll do for me. Oh, what's this? A copy of Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle. Almost sold out, only 100 copies left. Less than. Less than? Oh, God. All right. There's a link in the description. What else? Maybe I should do some push ups or something. I could do like five or six push ups. You know, they'll be impressed with that. Give me 100. Yeah, I could give you 100 in increments of 20. I could do two. 200? Two. Oh. Right, so let's take you downstairs. So it's kind of like, I've got two offices now, one for actually working in, and then there's Unicorn Labs, which I guess is Amanda's office, for doing the print. So let's give you a little tour of that. What are you doing? Um, documents. Giving documents. <laughs> Tax documents, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if this is your first time on this channel, um, you might notice that we, we live in a converted church. This is this a hundred year old church. And we do have another channel called Hardcastle Towers all about the conversion. And uh, I do get regular emails and comments from people saying, where's the next episode? You know, if I could, I'd have I'd have another year's worth of content, which I have filmed. I just haven't got around to editing it yet because I spend all my life editing these videos for Photo Tripper. And I can't figure out a way to monetize Hardcastle Towers. No one's gonna buy my photography book uh, on a home renovation channel. Anyway, if I can figure it out, I I'll do it. But I haven't forgotten, I will get around to it. This is Unicorn Labs. And this is where I print all of my photography prints for my clients and it centers around the Canon Pro 2100 inkjet printer. And the paper that I use is Photospeed. Photospeed paper is absolutely brilliant paper. The paper that I like the best, I think is called Platinum Cotton 305, but I also really love this Platinum Barita 300. It comes out absolutely spectacular, but it's a little bit tricky to work with because it's very, very stiff. So, you know, when your prints come out, they've, they've got a bit of a curl to them. So that's why I usually prefer the, the, the softer matte paper, because when it comes out and the printer cuts it, it doesn't quite curl like that because this, this is really stiff, whereas the, the other paper is a bit more flexible. So those are my two favorite types. The Barita kind of looks really intense and really sharp and contrasty, but it's a little bit more difficult to work with, especially if you're doing long runs of many, many prints. The platinum cotton is so much more forgiving just in the handling of the paper. So what is the thing that we hate the most about this inkjet printer, love? The ink. The cost of the ink. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So this printer 
is brilliant. It, it prints brilliant quality images. I absolutely love what comes out of it. And being able to print on a 24 inch roll is far more economical in terms of, of wastage. However, what you, what you need to understand if you're in the market for a printer is the ink cartridges are just criminally expensive. I think it's probably about $300 per cartridge for some of them, and it takes 13 cartridges. So if you, if you do the maths, you'll, you'll see that it's, it's quite obscene. But you, you can't argue with the quality that comes out of it. It's absolutely stunning. However, what I would recommend if you are in the market for a printer, if you don't see yourself needing 24 inches on a roll, you might be better off with the sheet fed smaller printer for sizes like uh, 16 inch at the longest side. It's a lot easier to handle the paper sheets than it is the, the curly paper. And I think the ink cartridges are probably significantly cheaper than, than the ones that are in these large format printers. This is my wedding picture from, um, I had it's a man I married a couple of years back. Yeah, he's all right, isn't he? Oh yeah. He's a good looker. Yeah, shame he didn't stay like that. <laughs> It didn't take long. <laughs> it's not very nice, is it? Now, I promised you guys that uh, the next video would be the brawl that I had with Thomas Heaton. Well, well I've had a few computer issues this week and that's going to be next week. So I've done this video instead, you see. So, well, that pretty much concludes the latest Photo Tripper HQ photography studio update. I'm pretty sure that the next version will be extremely different again. But it's time for us to enjoy a lovely hot chocolate next to a cozy log fire. We've got snow outside, it's cold and icy, but we're all cozy and warm with the cats in here. And I hope you're having a cozy Christmas too. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to tickle my bell and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now about those documents. I'll be wanting those back.